Flying Leopard fighters actually settled in North Korea? German military experts have proven that once it is introduced by North Korea, the South Korean Air Force will face a real threat. On Twitter, a photo taken at the Yangakdo International Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea, was forwarded by many military bloggers. The photo shows a fighter jet flying over Pyongyang that is clearly different from the current model of the North Korean Air Force. In this regard, German military expert Precht, who has long paid attention to military developments in the Asia-Pacific, said, I am sure that this is a JH-7A fighter bomber made in China. If the authenticity of this photo is confirmed, then it is a foregone conclusion that China's JH-7A Flying Leopard fighter jets will enter North Korea. However, why would North Korea take a fancy to this old model that was developed in China in the 1990s and has now been discontinued? How important is the introduction of the JH-7A to North Korea's national defense? The Flying Leopard fighter is a single-seat aircraft with an airframe style and performance similar to that of the F-16 fighter. It is a fourth-generation multi-purpose fighter independently developed by China and has obvious characteristics of de-Americanization. The Flying Leopard fighter jet adopts advanced electronic attack, combat reminder and warning, fire control radar and other technologies, and can conduct all-weather and all-round operations. It can realize cooperation between fighter jets and other fighter jets, drones and other aircraft, and has excellent air combat and ground attack capabilities. It is one of the main tactical weapons of the Chinese armed forces. The JH-7 is a flying leopard fighter bomber developed by China's Aviation Industry Corporation of China in the 1990s. While having excellent air-slash-sea attack capabilities, it also has certain air combat capabilities. From production in 1992 to the discontinuation of production in 2017, AVIC has produced more than 270 JH-7s. At present, there are still more than 200 aircraft in service in the PLA series. According to the JH-7's public data, its maximum takeoff weight is 28.5 tons and its payload bomb load is 7 tons. However, after upgrading to the JH-7A, its wing strength has been upgraded. Moreover, a pair of mounts were added, which increased the bomb load of the JH-7A to 9.5 tons, and the firepower projection capability was greatly enhanced. In addition, the JH-7A's airborne radar and avionics system have also been upgraded, with multi-target strike capabilities and a certain degree of anti-electronic interference capabilities. Before the People's Liberation Army Navy and Air Force equipment entered the model blowout period, the JH-7A was the main aircraft model used to defend China's maritime rights and interests, and was also the Air Force's main ground attack platform. It has the ability to launch YJ-83K anti-ship missiles and KD-88 air-to-surface missiles. To a certain extent, the JH-7 plays the role of a multi-purpose fighter, with air-to-surface strike being its main tactical function. Although the current multi-purpose fighter J-16 is much better than the JH-7A in avionics performance, combat radius, air combat performance and other fields, the JH-7A still wins the favor of the Naval Aviation Force due to its low service cost. After all, the JH-7's combat radius of up to 1,600 kilometers and the ability to carry YJ-83K anti-ship missiles are the most needed performances for naval aviation. Considering that the People's Liberation Army needs such a low-cost model that is cheap and affordable, the JH-7A will continue to play its role in the People's Liberation Army's series. 
However, although the JH-7A is only a mid- to low-end model in the Chinese Air Forces series, in the eyes of the North Korean Air Force, the JH-7A is undoubtedly a hot potato. As a highly centralized country, North Korea has been committed to developing domestic weapons technology and massively increasing the size of its military under multilateral sanctions and international pressure. North Korea possesses a considerable number of rocket launchers and other similar ballistic missile systems, and has also developed its own nuclear weapons and other high-tech weapons. The main reason why North Korea develops weapons is for self-defense and to maintain its regime status. Due to North Korea's poor economic development, weak international status and frequent external pressure, North Korea needs powerful weapons to maintain its security and sovereignty. At present, the North Korean Air Force seriously lacks air-to-surface strike platforms. The most advanced model is the MiG-29A developed by the Soviet Union in the 1980s. However, the MiG-29A has always been nicknamed the Airport Defender and has a combat radius of only 650 kilometers. Whether it is air-to-surface strike capability or air combat performance, it is completely unable to compare with the F-15K heavy multi-purpose fighter equipped by the South Korean Air Force. As for the MiG-21-23, which are more numerous in the North Korean Air Force, they are essentially second-generation fighters. In the face of the electronic warfare system of the South Korean Air Force, it is basically equivalent to the number of combat results and there is no strategic threat. In the naval field, the gap between North Korea and South Korea is even greater. The South Korean Navy is equipped with three King Sejong the Great class destroyers, with a full load displacement of more than 10,000 tons. Equipped with a phased array radar and a 128-unit vertical launch system, the combat effectiveness of the entire ship ranks first in the world. In addition, the South Korean Navy is also equipped with two Dokdo-class amphibious assault ships, nine large destroyers and several frigates, ranking eighth in the world in terms of overall strength. As for the North Korean Navy, it is currently dominated by small guns and small boats. It basically does not have a mature surface combat system and can only be regarded as a weak coastal defense navy. In this context, once a hot war breaks out between North and South Korea, it is basically impossible for North Korea to prevent the South Korean military from seizing air and sea control. In modern warfare, the impact of losing air or sea control on the balance of victory is self-evident. North Korea obviously has a very clear understanding of this reality. In 2020, there was an attempt to introduce the Su-35 from Russia to change the status quo, but the Su-35's price of hundreds of millions of dollars discouraged North Korea. If the Flying Leopard fighter jet does appear in North Korea, North Korea will become one of the few countries to possess this type of fighter jet. The JH-7A is a very practical aircraft for North Korea. First of all, the JH-7A is a low-cost model and it is also a second-hand model retired from the Chinese Air Force. Even a small country like North Korea has enough budget to purchase in large quantities. For the North Korean Air Force, the most important development direction now is not to catch up with the performance of the aircraft, but to obtain a batch of fighters with sufficient scale and usable performance as soon as possible, that is, to make up for the performance gap with the advantage of scale. Although China also has advanced fourth-generation models for export, such as the JF-17 Fierce Dragon and J-10CE. However, these are all models that focus on air superiority operations. Even if North Korea introduces a small amount of them, 
it will be difficult to change the situation where its naval and air forces are far behind. Secondly, the JH-7A can make up for the air-to-surface strike capability that the North Korean Air Force currently lacks most urgently. The JH-7A has a combat radius of up to 1,600 kilometers and an ammunition load of more than 9 tons. It can launch YJ-83K, KD-88 and other precision-guided munitions. As long as the number is sufficient, it can pose a considerable threat to the South Korean Navy. In addition, the JH-7A can also perform ground strike missions and destroy South Korean military airports and radar stations, thereby weakening the South Korean Air Force's influence on the war situation. Finally, North Korea's introduction of JH-7A is also a win-win situation for China. After the Chinese Air Force installed a large number of J-16s, the future destination of more than 200 JH-7A aircraft has become a hotly discussed topic among military fans. After all, the service life of these models is no more than 20 years at most, so it would be a pity to eliminate them directly. After North Korea introduces this batch of second-hand JH-7A, it will not only free up the Chinese Air Force to equip new fighter jets, but also improve North Korea's military strength. This can allow China to gain a more powerful strategic partner in the Asia-Pacific direction to cope with military pressure from the United States, Japan, and South Korea. As the main defense force of South Korea, the equipment and technology of the South Korean Navy have been continuously upgraded in recent years. The South Korean Navy has a variety of weapons and equipment, including iron cavalry, anti-submarine helicopters, Osprey aircraft, Aegis cruisers, and lightning submarines. The performance and technology of these equipment are already very advanced and provide good support for South Korea's maritime operations. In addition, South Korea also cooperates with the United States, Japan and other countries to jointly develop and deploy the latest defense systems to deal with any possible threats. Among them, the Aegis system is one of the main defense systems of the South Korean Navy. It can detect and track the movement of enemy ships and effectively intercept them. However, South Korea still needs to continue to strengthen its defense capabilities, especially in dealing with high-tech weapons such as the Flying Leopard fighter jet. It is necessary to strengthen its countermeasures technology and equipment to further improve the combat capabilities and defense capabilities of the South Korean Navy. The suspected appearance of flying leopard fighter jets in North Korea has caused the South Korean Navy and other countries around the world to express concern about North Korea's weapons development. The South Korean Navy needs to take more proactive measures to improve its defense capabilities to ensure safety and stability at sea. Cooperation with other countries is also necessary to strengthen defense systems to face any threats that may arise. At the same time, North Korea should also respect international laws and regulations and safeguard its own security and sovereignty in a peaceful and cooperative manner. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.